This video is going to examine how enthalpy changes with temperature. In the last video we have defined enthalpy and uh, enthalpy is going to be very similar to the internal energy which appears in the first law but it's a little bit easier to work with. And as a matter of, in fa of fact, in chemistry and in the life sciences, when we think about chemical reactions and the amount of energy that a chemical reaction requires or uh, can generate, we actually uh, codify that in terms of enthalpy as opposed to internal energy. Okay, so uh, what we do in this video is just examine how uh, the enthalpy changes with temperature. Okay, so uh, this uh, is going to work very similarly to what we did with internal energy, in which a couple of videos ago we saw how the internal energy changes with temperature. So the rational is going to be exactly the same and the finding is going to be illuminating, hopefully, when you compare it to what happens with internal energy. Okay, so let's get started. Again, our goal is to find out how this enthalpy depends on temperature, and it's not very obvious from these two equations that we have at our disposal how the temperature dependence happens to be. Uh, but uh, notice that here we have heat, okay, and then we actually have the variation of heat with temperature in that expression, so we really only have to put these expressions together to find out how the enthalpy changes with temperature. Again, if we take the way that heat varies with temperature, uh, that's how it does. Okay, and then we take the enthalpy uh, expression in terms of uh, differential form. Okay, we have the following. Okay, so really, uh, notice that we simply just have to modify this expression to make it uh, be at constant pressure, then, then that, that would be it, really. So at constant pressure, it just happens that the heat capacity, this is the heat capacity at constant pressure. So that is going to give us how the enthalpy changes with temperature. Okay, this is how it depends on temperature. And then notice that if we rearrange that expression to take the first derivative of the enthalpy with respect to temperature, what we will find is that this is just a heat capacity at constant pressure. And we can represent this because the geometric meaning of the first derivative of a function with respect to a variable, right, that's the first derivative, is just, it has some meaning, it's just the slope of a line tangent to the curve at the point that you're interested in. So if we plot our function, which is the enthalpy, uh, versus the variable, the temperature, this is what we're trying to do, we're trying to see how the enthalpy changes with temperature, so it actually grows, because the heat capacity is positive, right, it grows, Right, so notice that the tangent at any point in that line, so let's get that and, and make a, a line that is tangent to the curve right there, the slope uh, of this line is going to be equal to the heat capacity at constant pressure. Okay, great, so this is very similar to what we actually had for the internal energy. As a matter of fact, we can overlay this result to that for the internal energy to learn how the enthalpy and the internal energy are similar but different. Okay, for the internal energy, what we had is that the change in internal energy with respect to temperature was equal to the heat capacity at constant volume. And again, notice that that comes directly from that expression for the internal energy, which is very similar to that for enthalpy. The only difference is whether you're working at constant pressure or constant volume. Okay, so uh, now we can actually again overlay here uh, the internal energy to find out the following. Notice that uh, the difference between the enthalpy and the internal energy is a term that is the product of the pressure and the volume. But these quantities are positive, right? What that means is that at all points, the enthalpy will be larger than the internal energy. Okay, so then the internal energy is going to be a little bit below that. Okay, so it will be something like that. And then uh, the slope at any point right here, that slope is going to be the heat capacity at constant volume. Okay? So uh, actually what you see here is uh, geometrically correct, right? So the internal energy goes below uh, uh, the enthalpy. And also it's true that when you look at the slope of that line and the slope of that line at the same temperature, what should happen is that the heat capacity at constant pressure should be a little bit larger than the heat capacity 
at constant volume, especially for a, uh, for a gas. There's some cases in liquids when they can get really close together, actually identical to each other and for solids, but for gases, which is uh, where these changes are, are more uh, remarkable, uh, the heat capacity at constant pressure should be larger than the heat capacity at constant volume. Okay, so uh, again, in problems, uh, uh, we're going to have to find here an explicit dependence of the enthalpy on temperature, and that can be done via simple, uh, via simple integration of that expression, or this expression, we can integrate that to find delta H is going to be equal to the integral of Cp differential of T, and again, you're going to have two cases here, one in which the heat capacity is constant, it's just a number, and it does not depend on temperature. In that case, then, uh, the expression turns into simply Cp delta T, okay, delta H, and a different case in which is one in which the heat capacity will depend on temperature, right, so you will have to then evaluate the integral from T1 to T2 analytically. All right, to close off this video, we're going to just do a, a numerical problem, which is going to be very simple to illustrate this point. We're going to take an ideal gas, which is going to be uh, in a container, okay, and uh, we're going to elevate the temperature from uh, 298 Kelvin to 310 Kelvin. Okay, so this is your ideal gas, and you have two moles at 298 Kelvin. We're now elevating this to 310 Kelvin, and we're asking what is the change in, in enthalpy. Well, what we know is that the enthalpy should increase with temperature. The question is by how much in this particular case. Notice that what you need to know here is what the heat capacity is. And the problem tells us that for this ideal gas, the heat capacity, the more heat capacity at constant pressure is 5 halves of the R constant. Notice that that is a constant number, right? So you have uh, 2.5 multiplied by 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. That does not depend on temperature. And what that means is that you can, you, you can use this expression directly. Of course, the only problem here is that uh, notice that we have there a per mole quantity, and this is not per mole. But there's a way to relate them both, both, which is to just simply multiply the more heat capacity by the number of moles, and then delta T. OK, so we're actually ready to solve this problem then. By punching in the numbers, we get that delta H is going to be 2.00 mole multiplied by 5, five halves of R, and R is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. And then uh, that is the difference in temperature, which is the final temperature, 310 Kelvin minus the initial temperature, 298 Kelvin. And that's all that you need to do. The important things here are what the units of the answer are, which should be joules, and the sign. Okay, notice that because we're elevating the temperature, the system is gaining energy and enthalpy, right? So the change in enthalpy upon heating should be positive. Okay, and then uh, again, the units uh, can be worked out because the moles cancel and the Kelvin cancel, so only the joules survive. Okay, and then you can do this in your calculator and contrast that number with the one that you have in the textbook. All right, so this video has shown you how the enthalpy depends on temperature and has compared that temperature dependence of the enthalpy to the temperature dependence of the internal energy so that you can begin to see how energy and internal energy, sorry, enthalpy and internal energy are similar but different.